Ahoy Vashikni. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jen and I am a Californian who moved to Prague nine and a half years ago and I make videos about what it's like to be a foreigner here. When I did move here nine and a half years ago, I worked at a school for language studies for adults and so I had a ton of interaction with hundreds of Czech students and they all seemed very nice, very normal, but after a few months, I started to notice some weird quirks about Czech people. Cultural quirks are all relative. I'm sure there's many things that Americans do that the rest of the world finds weird. Um, one of the things was that they thought I was overly expressive, kind of like a clown, big facial expressions and wild gesticulations as I try to speak. Whereas the Czechs find uh, a more monotone register to be normal, not a lot of gesticulating with the hands, but these are just a few of the cultural differences. So after nine and a half years, these little quirks that I found in Czech people seem pretty normal to me. And so I reached out to some of my fellow expat friends here and said, is there anything you find odd about Czech people? And they had some things to say. <laughs> so in this video, I'm gonna share with my American or foreign audience um, some quirky things about the Czechs that you might want to look out for if you come to visit. But before we get to the weird quirks of Czech people, I want to thank this week's sponsor, NordVPN. Don't think you need a VPN on your computer, tablet, or phone? Think again. Here are three reasons why you do. If you're using a website that doesn't have HTTPS, then that website is not secure and cyber criminals can access your internet traffic between you and that site. NordVPN helps keep that data private, even from your own internet service provider. How do you know if an app on your phone is secure? You don't. NordVPN adds an extra layer of security to your mobile phone to keep the data that you use on that app private. Public Wi-Fi is not secure, and it's the perfect opportunity for hackers to access your internet traffic. NordVPN encrypts that traffic to protect you from cyber criminals trying to steal it. This month, NordVPN is offering a Black Friday deal for viewers of Dream Prog. You can go to the link below in the description box to get a two-year plan plus one month for free with a huge discount. So check out the link below to protect your devices and your data while also getting huge savings. When you do, you help me support this channel so I can keep making you more videos. So thank you. So first, let me say that weirdness is relative. These are quirks I've noticed, but mostly have grown on me and become charming. So no offense intended to anybody. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments all the weird things that Americans do. Checks buy a lot of flowers, way more flowers than Americans do. In fact, in Prague, you can find a flower shop on almost every block. In my neighborhood, there are several, and there's even a 24-hour non-stop flower shop. I don't know what you did at 3 a.m., dude, but it must have been pretty bad. But the weird thing is not the sheer quantity of flower shops in the Czech Republic, but the fact that when the Czechs buy them, they carry them upside down. And I'm not just talking about like buying one sunflower and you're kind of swinging your arms and so it goes upside down. They buy a bouquet and then they flip it upside down and they walk through the streets with like upside down flowers. I don't know if they give the flowers upside down. I've never been given flowers by a check, unfortunately. It just seems strange to me, like the flowers grow in an upright position and you put them in a vase in an upright position, like what's the point of walking with them upside down? Is it to relieve the stress on the neck of the flower? I don't know, maybe you can enlighten me in the comments below. And the weirdness doesn't stop there. When bringing flowers to someone, say you're invited to their home, you should bring an odd number of flowers. An even number of flowers are for funerals naturally. I would say that while Czech women are really independent, Czech men are also very traditionally chivalrous, opening doors for women, etc. But when you walk into a pub with a Czech man, 
they will go first. And this is not them being rude, this is them being even more chivalrous to protect the lady from flying beer glasses and possible punches being thrown on the inside of the pub. Americans and Europeans use utensils differently. So first, Americans will cut food with the knife in the right hand, cut the food, maybe a few slices, put the knife down, switch hands, and then hold the fork much like a pencil and use it to sort of scoop up the food. And then they will do this again. Presumably this is to slow them down so they don't eat so much. Europeans will put the fork in the left hand, the knife in the right hand, index fingers pointing down, sort of hiding the handles, and then they will cut the food and then eat it with the left hand. A lot more efficient. Now I'm certainly not an expert on table manners. I grew up in a family of wolves. There were nine of us at the dinner table any given night, and my goal was efficiency. Basically, I held the fork in my dominant hand so that I could eat as quickly as possible so that I could have access to seconds before any of my brothers or sisters. We ate like kings, but we ate like wolves. Point being that I am the last person to comment on people's table manners. However, I have seen a utensil grip in the Czech Republic that I have seen nowhere else in the world. Czech people, not all of them, but I've definitely seen it a lot here, will take the fork and the knife as a European would, but they will change the grip on the fork so that it's like this. And then they will start to saw at their food. And it's interesting, picture like a tavern with a recently fashioned you know, iron fork from a metalsmith and you're trying to basically cut into a pork knuckle so you need like a little bit of, of grip on the fork and then they'll eat like that. And I don't know if this is a style that developed in the Czech Republic or if this is something new, um, but it's definitely something I've seen here. Comments below. So Czech people have a sordid past when it comes to standing in lines or in queues, as the Brits call it. Um, I know that during communism, they were forced to stand in lines all the time. I've heard it said that if a Czech person happens upon a line, they just get into it because there must be something worth having at the end of it. So I'm not gonna begrudge them this quirk, but the Czechs cut in line all the freaking time. For example, I'm standing still at the supermarket near the checkout counter. I have a handful of groceries. What do you think I'm doing here? Because I've left the traditional American generous bit of space between me and the next guy in line, mainly because I didn't want to smell what he had for breakfast, Czech person just thinks they can cut right in front of me. So here I feel like the problem is that Americans always allow more space in front of them and Czechs will take advantage of that space. Another thing Czechs will do, and this is in shops like, for example, a copy shop, is some, some checks, will just go right to the front of the line and start talking to the salesperson because their problem will only take 10 minutes to solve and everyone standing in line's problems will clearly take like four hours to solve. So can you just get me done first? Now I have been to countries where lines do not exist. I'm looking at you, India, and I'm looking at you, Italy. But in the Czech Republic, there's a guise of a line they understand what the hell a line is for, and yet they totally disregard the norms surrounding lines. It's frustrating. <laughs> Did you catch that? <laughs> what is that? I didn't even know how to Google to find out, but this little sound <laughs> is something that all checks do. And now I freaking do it all the time. I started to notice it when I was teaching um, at a company and I would give the students a task to do. And as they were sort of gathering their, their thoughts about it, they would be like, huh, huh, huh. And I, I didn't know what it was. Does it come from like a Czech TV show? I know Americans must have something similar, but honestly, I can't even remember. Like I just do the Czech one now. 
And when I was in Germany, we had a Czech gentleman that we bumped into and he was trying to help us solve a problem and he did it too while he was thinking. Where did this come from? I would love to know. Yep, it's not official unless it's been signed in blue ink. This I learned the hard way when I worked at a visa company here in Prague. We used to have to submit documents to various government offices and they had to be signed in blue ink. As if black ink was the telltale sign of a forgery. I can only imagine this came from like when photocopiers first were launched in the Czech Republic and people were just like photocopying fake signatures and just black ink. And so the authorities had to fix the problem. So they just mandated that everybody sign in blue ink, naturally. And when you move here from the United States, one of the things you have to have is a bank letter showing how much savings you have. And so we used to have to instruct the bankers in America to sign this letter in blue ink. And I can't tell you how many times the bankers were like, we don't have blue ink. And I'm like, you don't have blue ink in the bank? No. And we'd have to get the clients to like bring them a blue pen to sign the bank document so that the lady at the Urjad would know it wasn't a forgery. They'll treat your dog better than they'll treat you. Mostly in a restaurant. Your dog will be served a fresh bowl of water before you will be served anything. I was once at this charming vinoteca and I was sitting on a wooden bench along with Tobik and another customer came over from her table with a extra seat cushion. Not for me, but for Tobik. And she said, so he has comfort. Like this dog doesn't already live like a 17th century king. <laughs> they count with their thumbs. I've seen people in America count with their thumbs, but it's always kind of like a very masculine, maybe blue collar worker that would count with their thumbs. You'd never see like a woman go one, two, three. Um, but that's how the checks count. It's like one, two, three. Americans count one, two, three, four. This is also kind of strange when you're sitting in a pub and the waitress looks over and someone does this. That means one beer, please. Czechs have an irrational fear of drafts. Now, I think this is Central European. I know that Germans are definitely afraid of drafts as well. Um, but the Czechs think that a draft causes a headache and an upset stomach, stiff muscles and clogged arteries. It's like the mixing of dual temperatures of air is going to somehow flummox your four humors. Whereas in America, we love nothing more than a swift kick of cold, fresh air. Like to Americans, a room that is stuffy is cured by opening up a window to get some cold, fresh air in there. That is healthy to us. Whereas according to the checks, this is going to cause all sorts of ailments and possibly even premature death. The sandwich is the most convenient vehicle for bread, meat, cheese, and condiments that humans have ever invented. The bread keeps your hands clean. It packs nicely into a briefcase or backpack. The Czechs eat mostly the same ingredients. It's just that they construct the sandwich differently. So first they have these little things called chlebiček, chlebičky and it is one slice of bread with all of the meats and cheeses and condiments on the top. And you buy these beautiful little flabichki in sort of like a deli and take it to go. But instead of giving you a very convenient top slice of bread so that the ingredients don't go everywhere, they instead wrap it in some very intricate origami paper shape so that it doesn't spill. And then you have the classic meat on a roll. So the most famous type of Czech pechivo, baked good, is a rolik. Um, they have different names for all of their baked goods. Ours are just kind of like bread rolls, but this one specifically is a rolik and it's like a long, it almost looks like a hot dog bun, a long hot dog bun. And the Czechs, instead of cutting a very natural line across lengthwise and putting the meat and cheese in the rolling, 
they lay the processed meat and cheese on it as if they're tucking it into bed. And then they eat it like that. These are just a few of the tiny quirks that make Czechs very special and different from Americans. And as I mentioned, these are all relative, so I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments all the weird things that Americans do. Have you ever been to the Czech Republic and did you notice anything quirky? Please tell me in the comments below. Uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!